We are now recording. So this is the Chaos Community Call, June 25th. Um, I'm gonna put the link to the minutes in the chat here. I think obviously the big thing that is occurring today is we're gonna release the metrics for the public comment. That's obviously the number one priority. Um, so I'm gonna share the release candidate page that um, Kevin has put together. I thought maybe if we could just give it one more look. It's there in the chat. Oh, Kevin's here. So Kevin, I just put the metrics release candidate. I'm glad you're here because just if anybody has any questions about this. Is that in an email as well, Matt? Um, I'll send it to you via email. Thanks. Yeah. Sean, you can also look in the Chaos Weekly Minutes. It's there. So put the link there. Um, all right. So first of all, a, a, let's see, a variety of thanks we need to go around. So there's obviously the thanks to the working groups for making a push towards um, identifying metrics for the first version. So you can all nod if <laughs> that counts for you. Um, and then the other is obviously to Kevin for really kind of tracking, spending the time tracking the work that the uh, working groups were doing and getting this page set up as something that we're gonna share uh, out with folks I had today. a lot of help from Georg. Well then thanks to Georg too. So, but it was all of you, Kevin. I well, then back to Kevin. I retract to my your thank you to Georg. <laughs> they can just bounce around. Um, so, if you could take a look there, did did anybody notice there's now a fave icon on the tab? Did that happen? That's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> so my, now it's a white background. I don't know how much I like that, but. You're talking about the donate option? No, I'm talking about the tab on the top of your browser for the chaos page. Oh, the, the, now the, oh. the little icon is now there. Oh, Ooh. yeah. Do you, That's do awesome. you, want, it in, uh, do you yeah. want it in black? That's not hard. Well, I, I have no control over it, so I have to like put in a <laughs> I have to issue. No, 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 I, I think that's the image that I stuck in the, in the GitHub issue. Uh, yes, it is. Okay, I can just make another one if you guys care for black. I don't really care. This is totally fine. It takes me two seconds. <laughs> or do we do we want a transparent background? That was the only thing. If it was transparent, but transparent would be awesome. Um, but it looks good as it is. I, I think it looks. Yeah, I think it looks good. There was nothing. Thank, there thank you, John. <laughs> I'll, I'll 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 put an optional one up there. that's transparent later today. Moving in the right direction. <laughs> it's the big, it's the these little things that matter. So, <laughs> um, so if you could take a the look. donate button is new as well. By the way, what's what Sean pointed out? When did that show? I, I think Kevin adjust you adjusted the background on that. I think it looks great. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, the donate button the donate button just goes straight into my bank account. It's a it's a scam. I'm kidding. <laughs> that's a joke. I forgot this was being recorded. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, does anybody have thoughts on on kind of this page? This is what would be sent out. Um, actually, you resolved one of the comments that I was going to make, Kevin, which was getting all of the link comment columns to line up with one another. Yeah, I did that right before I logged in, actually. Because <laughs> they were they were bouncing back and forth, but yeah, they look good. So value value is doing a release. Yes, uh, they're they're up there in our in our repo. And okay. Yes. It's the the four four metrics. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank I you will for have taking that. care of that, Andy. Okay, so just a small to-do there. Um, 
I'm going to go if people could randomly click on things. It could always just take you to the repository, the markdown page. No, it looks to me like it's taking me to a web page that's been generated. Oh, that's what I meant, to the web page. Sorry, words. Andy, what is the focus area for those four metrics that are being released? Oh, um, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, do they match up to the uh, uh, table? I'll just, well, I'll check the tape. Okay. Is anybody seeing anything right off the bat as you're clicking through stuff? I noticed that some images are pretty high resolution, like like you can read them pretty well, and then some of them are, for some reason, they're like really, really low DPI. Um, for like elephant factors, there's F1 risk. Okay. Yep, so we're pulling those directly from the, uh, the work group repositories. So whatever is in there is, is uh is what we're pulling. So if there I I do uh I did notice there's one one blurry image in risk. I think that's probably the one you're referring to. Uh, yeah, I saw that too. It was like a it's a uh, it's license coverage. Yeah. But maybe that's just an issue to post in that comment period, Matt. You know what I mean? Just say yeah. Fix your blurry image. <laughs> that, would be, that would be the comment. You could you could probably even make that comment right now. Sorry, I was dropped in back. Sean, fix your blurry image. <laughs> okay, I actually I got it out of the. Are you talking about Elgin Factor? I'm talking about license coverage. Oh, that's my blurry image. Oh, it's just a very small image, so I think it got blown up. Yeah, if you uh, yeah, I think Matt if. Now, if you just uh, throw a higher resolution image either in my inbox or just do a pull request onto the GitHub thing or email it to Kevin, however you want to handle it. It didn't look that bad on the GitHub page site, but maybe it's being rendered differently now on a web page. Okay. Mm -hmm. Another, another mm -hmm. option is we could use HTML tags and resize the image. Yeah, I'd almost bet that that's WordPress doing something funny to the image size. I think it's, it's blurry on the, it is, it, it's not a great image on the, in the repo either. All right, well, yeah. it's the Dusox image you're talking about? No, it's the sample filter and visualization. Oh yeah, it's a web presentation of Dusox output. Total files, license declared files, okay. total percent coverage. It's the license coverage metric. Okay. Yeah, we can, I'll ask uh, Matt Snell if he can get us a higher resolution version of that. He just gave a thumbs up. All right, thank you, Matt. Okay, um, actually a lot, every link that I clicked, unless somebody saw differently. So the way that the workflow is gonna work is we talked about this ever so briefly yesterday in a different call, is that the link, so where it says comment, it takes you to an issue that Georg and Kevin had put together. And the way that we're proposing the workflow, and if people have something different to say here, go ahead and say it. But if you see something like blurry image, you would just drop it in there. You don't have to issue a pull request. It's really just saying you have a blurry image or you have a typo or that we workflow, we are just gonna keep everything in that one issue if people have comments. Does that make sense? Yeah. They can yeah. negotiate a pull request if they want, I suppose. But at that point, really all we're asking people to do, kind of this lowest bar, this, this lowest, right. lowest overhead is if you see something that you don't like or you have a question, just post it in the issue. Okay. And if, all right, and I guess we'll just see how it goes. I can imagine that if people have different questions, the comment structure could get weird. And it, maybe we might need to open another issue to keep it coherent, but I'm, I'm willing to give it a shot this way. It just, yeah, just could very well work just fine. Yep. We'll keep it really simple out of the gate and increase complexity if needed. 
Okay. Um, any other thoughts on that? Okay, so really, I think Kevin, it's getting the value ones in there, correct? Uh, yes, I think uh, I, I need to probably have a chat with the value work group about the focus areas, though. I'm not, uh, I'm not certain how they're matching up to the table. Okay. Uh, and some of the, the, the naming conventions are a little bit different than what's in the table. Okay. So well, that makes maybe sense. we could just throw yeah. together a focus area page real quick for the for the value work group. Uh, so so Kevin, well. I, can, uh, I can work with. I you think we do here. have focus areas. We do. Yeah. Yeah. How about we do that right now? Yeah, that way it just gets. I was going to say the same thing, so it's solved. So I just in the chat, I just put the focus areas for value as they stand. And so where are your metrics, Andy? Where are those? The metrics are in the um, value repo. Uh, there's a directory there called metrics. And there's I see, I see, okay. And so the, the first two metrics, the focus area is labor investment. And the last two metrics, uh, the focus area is living wage. And so I think we have a focus area called living wage. Yes, we do. So the question is, I haven't seen the metrics yet, whether that is a subset. I don't. So I think we're expecting multiple metrics related to living wage to be developed. There's two that are up there right now. Two for um, labor investment and, and two for living wage. So which, which two are for living wage? I'm sorry, um, Andy. The, the, ones that the have bottom work, two or the top two? Yeah, the ones that have the worker prefix are living wage. Okay. And the ones that okay. have the OSPO prefix are labor investment. Okay. So I think one of the things that Kevin is asking, so right now it's called worker org sponsorship. Yes, yes. And if you go to the living wage um, markdown page, yes, there isn't a metric in there. What okay. is that? Okay. So that living wage table needs to be updated to include worker org sponsorship. So As popular to so just the system. It's just a markdown navigation in the repository that we're talking about. Right. At this point, yeah. Would it also, well, what do you think about moving the metrics into the focus area directory? Um, that's what the DNI working group is doing. So, yeah, and I, I agree with that. File into the page repository that also, uh, the folder, which then makes it easier to name the file because we don't have to include the focus area as part of the file name. Uh, that sounds great to me. Is there an easy way to move files in the GitHub interface? I don't think. Uh, um, <laughs> Copy it. Request. Do a new, uh, <laughs> issue a new file and then delete the original. <laughs> get as many things, but it's not drag and drop. Maybe, how important is that right now, Georg? It is very important. All right, well then let's do it. Because if we change it in the next four oh, weeks before right. the release, it will break the yeah, website. No, you're right, things will break, yep. Okay. Would Can you like me to make the change right now? Yes. Okay. Can you move? Can you move the metrics, the four metrics, into their respective focus area folder? Yep. Yep. So the 
I think some other, like I think if evolution has the metrics inside, all of the metrics are in one metrics folder and then just link from a focus area markdown page. And yeah, I know I risk is the same way. Approach. So risk, risk and evolution are following the, the strategy that Andy's following. Well, well. I'm just, I'm, I'm not saying what's right or wrong. I'm just saying that there's other precedent and I can move them. I can move the risk ones. If that's, if we want to handle it that way, I have no, I, it's certainly easier to follow. Um, otherwise you just got a directory of metrics and you have to look at the other markdown to figure out what their category is. Yep. I personally prefer a folder structure to organize the metrics rather than having them all in one. I would say don't worry about yours though now for the time being, Sean. Exactly. Okay. The, the problem with the folder structure is that these metrics are shared. These are shared across all of the chaos repositories. So they don't they don't necessarily belong to that work group focus area. Uh, so I think uh, having I them to the top is, uh, I, I, I think it would be better. We have competing interests. Is that right? Is that what I'm hearing? It's more complex. <laughs> so I think, I think the, sort of the, the long-term case that Kevin's pointing out is that some of, some of the metrics will be of interest to more than one focus area. And by keeping or, them all in a metrics folder, it's easier to track them down. Is that what the I think to merge them, I think to merge them and publish them is more the point. Okay. Yeah. But let's not worry about it. I mean, Andy, I know Andy's doing it right now, but let's not worry about it with evolution and uh, risk. I don't know what common did. Okay. Um, so then I think the other action item, I don't know if you have it in the notes, Georg, I didn't look, was to make sure that the existing or the new metrics are in the table. Did you add that? I don't know. I kept track of everything we talked about, but maybe okay. not You're talking about like the, this table, put it in here, like that table. Should be uh, the, the, the two new metrics. Yeah, that's the one I was just. Okay. 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 Cool. Thank you. Okay. I have uh, just moved those. Um, Metrics files into the focus directory for the value repo. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Andy. Issue velocity. Okay, so then Andy, one more thing then. You, can you just add, so like if I'm looking at the labor investment focus area, yes. that folder right now, yep. you have issue velocity and labor cost. Can you add those we'll as do. names and questions in that table? And then same for, same for the other one, the other focus area, the living wage one. You know what I'm talking about? I'll do it now. Okay, thanks. And then once that's done, I think that addresses your issue, Kevin? Yes. Okay. So, then you, oh, go ahead, Caitlin. Now it's just uh, looking at the value metrics. Um, well, maybe there's something we can clean up over the next few weeks. Um, I'm missing a question at the top of the file. Let's see, value, what are you looking, value? Which one are you looking at? I was looking at the labor investment metrics, but it's the same for living wage. When you go into the metric in the uh -huh. file, so whichever project popularity, you don't have a question at the top. 
No. So, I mean, this is, I think this is something that's going to have to be cleaned up over the month because summer, because the template really doesn't ask for a question at the moment. It just asked for a description. Okay. I think if all the other groups have questions. Uh, well, I don't know about that actually. Uh, yeah, I think they do actually. Do they? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Something uh, for, and for, for evolution, they had uh, descriptions which were presenting in the form of a question. Oh, okay. Uh, because they had multiple levels of questions. Okay. Okay. Anyway, we'll fix that during the next four weeks. That's an easy one to fix. <laughs> make, your, make your sentence a question. <laughs> Add a what at the beginning. <laughs> and a question mark at the end. I agree, that's pretty easy to fix. Okay, cool. All right, uh, great. Then I think Kevin, I don't know how long that'll take you to get that onto the web page. Uh, about an hour, maybe. Okay. Um, can you ping me when you're done? Because I'll just wait to send out. I'm going to obviously make this announcement, and it's going to be in the weekly Chaos Weekly newsletter. Mm -hmm. And so I'll just hang tight. That newsletter is ready to go, but I just won't send it out until. Okay. Uh, there is there is an issue with. Uh... Uh, absolute and uh, relative paths within these markdown files. So when we uh, when we pull this when we pull this markdown into the website, uh -huh. the relative paths will URL relative paths will uh, basically be a dead end. Yep. Uh, so I think uh, I think Georg maybe I think you took care of all the DNI ones. Is that correct? Oh, um, I don't remember doing that. Maybe I did. Okay, I thought, I thought, I thought you went through and looked. Uh, I took care of the risk ones, uh, but uh, the links within the detail pages. Yep. In, in evolution, right now, some of the images are broken, and some of the uh, the links do dead end. So evolution for sure needs a little bit of work on their detail pages, uh, which I I can put pull requests in for that if, you, if you'd like me to or otherwise. Uh, oh, I see. So like I'm looking at code changes lines. Yeah. Like linking to code changes and it's in the 404. Right. If you have time to do that, Kevin, I, I think it would be helpful just because you know exactly what it should be. Um, okay. That, that would help. And then I think from here on forward, I think the evolution group and the risk group, we can just follow the model that you laid out for us. Okay. If, if you have I think it, evolution if you is don't, the only I... one right now uh, that yeah. I need to look at. That has relative links. Uh, yeah, I, th I think I think the others were all taken care of. Okay. So, uh, but if uh, another pair of eyes going through, checking those, checking for relative links would be would be great uh, in case I missed some because it's a, it is a lot of pages to to go How about, through. Um, I mean, I can. Okay. How do you want to do that, Kevin? Do you want to take a first swing at it, and then I'll take a look at what might have been missed? Sure. And and the other th that can be fixed during the comment period as well, I suppose. Okay. You know. Uh, okay. I have a question. I can take a pass at it before business hours tomorrow too. Okay. But if you want to get it out today, I can't help. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I have a question for the risk working group. I am in the repository looking at the metrics. And for example, bus factor, which is the first one in the metrics with a folder, and it's empty. But when I go to the um, release prototype, there is content for it. So where is this content coming Sorry. from? Not from the master plan, that. the risk repository. So say, say that again, that, so the, I okay. thought we merged all of our pull requests, but maybe there's something that's not merged. I posted in the chat, the file that I'm looking at. Okay. Can you possibly be looking at Elephant Factor? Uh, bus Factor isn't part of the release. Oh, Bus Factor. Yeah, no Bus, no, it's not. <clears throat> 
Okay. Uh, where, where are you finding that link to bus factor? I, I went to the repository. Oh, okay. Okay, I, I get confused. Bus I, factor, elephant factor. I, there's a I, I could have, I could have, I created a blank page for each of the metrics in the inventory of metrics that we're developing just to make it easier for us to keep track of. But yeah, bus factor is not in this release. So if there's a broken link, I'll, I'll go back and no, I think it would review the ones. I think it was just a, I think it was just a crisscross of elephant factor versus bus factor. Yep. Oh, like a typo I made. Okay. No, not you. I'll I think it was a typo oh. in Georg's head. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. I can't fix that. <laughs> are, are you okay with that, Georg? Is that? Yep. No, okay. That's all good. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, so I, I mean, my take is we can go ahead and move forward with this as soon as Kevin, you ping me, and then it sounds like we have some 404s to fix and some questions. I jotted down a few things, like descriptions into questions, but I mean, we have a month to fix these things during that public comment period. Is anybody opposed to, to sending it out and just using that period to fix these, what I consider to be fairly minor issues? I'm not opposed. I have one question. So, if as issues are surfaced in the comment period, is it the should we be as working groups sort of, if we agree on a recommended change, make that change and post it to the repository and ask Kevin to republish it, or is there a sort of a, a publishing cycle? Like, how continuous do we want the the changes that we make based on comments to be? I think is my question. Sure. What do you think, Kevin? Okay. Uh, so right now we are we are not pulling these uh, detail pages from a specific commit. We are pulling them from the master. So any changes that you make to the master will automatically uh, show up on the website. So during this month long period, uh, these pages will be in a constant state of uh, evolution. And then when we do the release, so we'll pull that specific commit at the end of the comment period. So that was uh, so there's no, talking to Georg. There's no button. Uh, I'm sorry? No, that makes sense. There, so there's no button that you have to push for those ch for changes made in the repository's master branch to show up on a web page? Automatic. Awesome. All right, cool. Yep, I agree. Does that address your issue, Sean? Yeah, I, that's it. I just wanted to kind of understand how it would work. So, like, if I, if we made changes, just when they would show up. So, okay, we, yeah, that that's I get it now. So, thank you. Um, any anybody else have any concerns about sending this out today, kind of as it stands? I would say on on the uh, the previous issue. So, if if things are being resolved from the issues. Uh, I think we need to make a note of that in the uh, in that issue comment stream that this this was resolved. Otherwise, uh, uh, looking at the issues, you know, the the blurry image be fixed, but we're still seeing it in the issues. Okay. Can we um, in issues? Can you delete comments? I you know can. The author can maybe. Yeah. Do I like it. Maintainer can as well. I think we we want that record though, don't we? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> we have to mark it as resolved somehow. We'll figure it out. Maybe just put a, a header on top of the comment or something like that. Like this comment has been resolved. Um, again, I think we're just going to kind of have to see how that works during the I comment. I think period. the maintainer of a repository has the option of editing any comment. Oh, okay. So, so they can, can go in and add the resolved comment, update, whatever. Okay. Just like a header that says, <laughs> thank you. This has been resolved one way or the other. Okay. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. Um, any other questions on this? This is by far the biggest thing for today, undoubtedly. 
Um, so any other comments on prior to release? I, again, I take, I'll take silence in this situation as go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. <laughs> that's, that's how I take it. So I, I can read silence differently based on my mood. It can mean yes or it can mean no. <laughs> and I'll take it as a yes this time. All right, good. Um, okay, any other comments on that? I have a pull request open on license coverage for the blurry images now. I agree. Um, should be. Okay, um, good. Um, I just, I guess a few other things that I had. Um, Chaos Con, just we're looking good. I think everybody has confirmed for one. Um, I've been talking with Stephanie at the Linux Foundation just about signage and all that kind of stuff. So that there will be kind of, you know, like go that way for Chaos Con signage in the hotel. Um, we're all set. We're going to have a, a uh, thank you banner kind of thing to um, Patricia and Red Hat for their support of the coffee and um, snacks during the morning and afternoon session. So that's also taken care of. Um, so anyway, I think we're good kind of logistically there. Um, the group had met. I think we have a structure down. I was hoping Don was here, but I'll, I'll probably post the keynotes next week in the newsletter. So it, we're also confirmed on keynotes, which is pretty cool. Um, did, I, did I see that the, the keynote session's full already, right? And then you guys have room in the other sessions or? Oh yeah, we have I'm two. still trying to figure out if I can come down or not. Did okay, you? we have two rooms. Um, one room is 100, seats 100 people. And that's the keynotes and the presentations, and that's going to run like as a single track. Yeah. Then the other room is 50 people, and we have three workshops that we're going to run in there. So there's going to be a Grimoire Lab workshop, an Augur workshop, and a DNI workshop. And those, so these two rooms will kind of run in parallel. One's smaller, one's a little bit bigger. Um, right now, yeah, we are showing is full because people who registered through the Open Source Summit North America site, they, you know, it was, it was an easy add-on for them and it was zero dollars. Got it. So um, I highly suspect that all hundred won't come. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's a zero cost to click a it button. It never happens at conferences. <laughs> so I, I can't make a guarantee, but something tells me that if you appear there will be room. <laughs> so, in yeah, some and I talked my wife into into letting that happen. We'll see. Okay. If I get that done. Um, so I, I, obviously, I can't make a guarantee, and I don't. But that's that's my general that's my general sense of things. We did talk about next year. We're probably gonna at least talk about maybe charging a nominal fee, just so think people think twice about just clicking the yeah, I'd like to go to Chaos Con. Um, that sounds like fun. Yeah, it sounds like fun and it cost me nothing to, to just click this button. So, <laughs> um, so anyway, that's, that's where we're at with Chaos Con. So things are, things are I, I honestly think things are pretty much set. For I think the next thing we need to do, especially now that we have confirmed speakers, is to publish the schedule, update the website, and then we can start yep. uh, letting everyone know that we have a schedule. Agreed. I was going to put it in the Chaos Weekly. I, I just, we're, I'm waiting for one person to confirm, and it's kind of an important person. So, and I just pinged them yesterday, seeing if they would. So I'm close. Good. To releasing the schedule. I'd, but what we can do is um, publish the schedule today, so you can include it in the weekly and just leave that spot blank. I could do that. Finally confirmed. Um, I'd have to make, well, yeah. So the schedule should go on the Chaos Con website like it has in the years before. Why don't we do it so next week so that we can get through the metrics release this week? Because I okay. need Kevin's help. That's fair. Yep. Um, 
But Don had, so we have, like I said, our two keynotes are confirmed. So anyway, it is, is looking good. I do, the one thing I do need to follow up on is the badges, the name badges, you know, the lanyard stuff. I haven't asked, I forgot to ask about that for the attendees. Yep, perfect. And I still haven't ordered poker chips or <laughs> stickers yet. I, it's on my to-do list. So we're going to hand out poker chips. And have, you, have you asked Community Bridge how to handle the payment of these? Yeah, so that one that one is I will pay, me personally, and then I will get reimbursed for those. And those are pretty low overhead. The Community Bridge thing, it's going to have bigger issues, like if we have bigger ticket items that aren't just like, you know, $70 for some stickers, those I don't care floating. But if we get into the $1,000 range, we got to figure out a little bit more sensible ways to pay out a community bridge. That's all. It's it's a total work in progress. I think it's, I think, I don't know, maybe they don't, but I think they kind of enjoy working with us just because they're, they're getting to work out the kinks as to how this is getting done. I Like even the, the Batergia donation, I think it's still being worked out at the moment because we didn't know the name of the bank or something like that to do yeah. an electronic funds transfer, so. Um, anyway, work in progress. So I, I'm just gonna, I'll just pay for them here and then just get reimbursed, so. Perfect, thank you very much, Matt. Yeah. Um, anything else from folks? Those were kind of my, those are my big, big items. All right, so I think at this point, um, Kevin, I'll just hang tight for you and then um, kind of give it a double double check and then we'll send it out. Okay. You want an email or do you want a video chat later? Oh, just send me an email unless there's something you want to talk okay. about. I, I think I'm okay. Okay. So. I, uh, I, I will apologize in advance for a bunch of spew. I'm trying to figure out where to put in the, uh, in the community. So if I put it in the wrong place over the next week or so, just uh, throw something virtual at me. I'll fix it. So what are you putting in where? <laughs> What's uh, so I, I've been doing kind of a deep dive on um, the stuff in the different focus areas in terms of like okay. the metrics and and writing up a whole bunch of stuff on. I'm, oh. I'm much more interested in things about like the business case and yep. like what questions should we be asking of these data and metrics that help us make better decisions and yep. how do we do that? Because um, I've, okay. I've kind of done that in the past for some of my teams when we're delivering software. Okay. And have always thought it could be done better, and I just don't know quite where to elucidate that stuff. So I'm going to start breaking up this long document I've written. I gotcha. I'm trying to find trying to, out. trying to commit it in places where it can be commented on, and gotcha. I guess that's so. okay. So if, your your point was if things start showing up and they're showing up at weird spots. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Say hey, that doesn't go here, and I can be like, yeah, I'm ignorant, and yeah. Kind of wrangle them going, to the right spots. <laughs> willing to be educated. Yes. <laughs> Fair enough. Cool. Uh, great. Well, appreciate that. Uh, great, everybody. Um, next week is the official monthly call, so I'll advertise that one uh, at a time. On the Grimoire Lab side, uh, oh, yeah. one thing I'm working with uh, Lewis and Jesus right now is to make the tutorial easier. The because right now, when you go to the Grimoire Lab tutorial, uh, people fail. Like getting started? The getting started. Right now it's predictably flawed. So <laughs> we're working on that. Um, That's good. Get a path for people to actually start playing with Google Lab. I think that's, I, we, you and I have talked about this for a long time, being able to, I think it's critically important. So I'm really glad you're doing that. Any piece of yep. software, if you, can't, if you can't install it, <laughs> then uh, nothing matters. So that's cool. Yep. Are you, or how are you doing it? Is it just through documentation or is it, are you using like containers? So, and... so there were uh, different ways of installing Grimoire Lab and I tried all of them and they all failed. Okay, great. So I said, okay, we're going to improve one of them and it's going okay. to be a Docker uh, Compose solution. Okay, great. 
um, different Docker containers like Elasticsearch and MariaDB. Those are the stock containers. And then there's uh, two or three that encapsulate different Grimoire Lab services. Great. Yep. And so it's a matter of Docker Compose. Um, you set up in a file what data sources you want for the different projects. You have to provide the API keys for GitHub, GitLab, and so on. And that's it. I'm gonna, that's, that's, so anyway, that's work in progress. We started, or I kicked it off today with uh, Lewis and Jesus. There's an issue somewhere on the Grimoire Lab tutorial uh, GitHub repo about this. Cool. I just put it in the notes. Um, other stuff? Are you good there? I know you have a lot of fires in the fire. Um, sorry. Did you, who were you talking to, Matt? You, did you have any oh. auger updates? We, yeah, we have, have a lot of iron. Uh, yeah, the Google Summer of Code students have been implementing all of the evolution metrics um, that were not implemented and documenting them better than they were. And right now we're working, we have a, I think I've mentioned this before, we have a completely new release of Augur that uh, right now the doc, just like what Grimoire Lab is doing, we have a Docker container and a, a Vagrant install that we refer developers to as a first step. And I think that the next version is going to be able to be installed more like a package, um, you know, a make script. And since it's all one database, it, it simplifies a lot of things. Um, and I'm actually working with um, Kevin and Janad and the Google Summer of Code students on updating our installation instructions. Uh, there's a lot of move. It's just uh, there's a lot of moving parts, like okay. you suggested. Okay, cool. I I did have one question as I was browsing through all the repos. Is there any sort of architectural diagrams that that map out how all these different components hang together? I kind of get it as I'm reading through things, but I I was just wondering if there's any. I think so. You know, Grimoire Lab and Augur are there. Yeah, Grimoire Lab and Augur are two. They don't. Sure, two separate things, but they're kind of being munged together. And like, how do we, as a community, measure no. all these things? So the the Grimoire Lab actually has a really great online architecture document, and I think it's in the README, the docs dot something, and I think okay. it's Jesus that put it together. I can't I can't point to the URL, but I know that. I know that it exists because I've read the Grimoire Lab architecture document before. I've seen so it. It's well. there somewhere. I, um, Augers is in a series of Google Docs that I'm working on getting into the repository uh, for the, the latest version. So the current version, I think that the architecture is stated in, in some of the uh, developer documents. But I think making it more clear, and I think, you know, for Augur, just writing up the new architecture and making that clear is important. I think for Grimoire Lab, it's probably just a question of making a really great document that I've read before sort of front and center somehow, somewhere. Like almost yes, like sir. maybe a Grimoire Labs, you know, what might be great for Grimoire Lab is like a Grimoire Lab start here <laughs> repository or something like that, because there are a lot of, I think there's like eight to 10 core repositories, depending what you're gonna do. Um, and so if we had something in the chaos organization where a person could just start here for Grimoire Lab, that, and maybe that exists and I don't know where it is, but if we could point to it more directly, I think it would help a lot because it's a really good document. Yeah, is, is there any, do you, do you all think there's any value in, you know, drawing a bunch of boxes and saying, you know, you can go get, here's the repo for things that go get things from Jira, here's the thing. And how does this tie together with a front end and where and how do we invest oh, these oh. metrics for different groups? Like I'm looking at well, it on the contrary point as chaos. I think I think there's tremendous value in, in doing that. And um, I think my point was that Grimoire Labs I know Grimoire Labs done it and published it. And sure, the that, fact that we that great, yeah. So you come to the you come to the chaos org and you don't find that right away. So I think if we can do something to make that be the thing you find. Right away, that will help for Grimoire Lab. Um, 
Augur is a right now a simpler case because there's one repository, um, and we can make it front and center in that one repository. However, I mean, I mean my point with that, I agree with you completely. It's very important, and it, I was just saying it exists for Grimoire Lab, and we just have to find a way to make it easy to find. Okay, so I'll I'll take a stab at drawing some boxes uh, as best I can from as I as I kind of do deep dive into all this stuff and read the different repos and what they do. Um, I am sure of one thing, it will be wrong. So, so as I do that, y'all can correct me. I'll probably put it in like a dry -O Google Doc uh, and share it out and just, just kind of get started on that. Cause I'm just trying to understand how all of this stuff can hang together to help an keep plans or questions and make good decisions about their, their teams and communities. So I'll both That's work great. on that. We know the right Thank people you. to ask if it is correct. So. Excellent. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. I, I look, I'll, I look I'll forward to seeing how, how it's interpreted. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wrongly. <laughs> no, no, but the, the wrongness might actually point to communication on our part. So it might be kind of an interesting and entertaining interpretation to read as well, as well as educational. Cool. All right. I'll take a stab at that over the next couple of weeks. Right on. Awesome. Thank you, John. Yeah. All right. Cool. Anything else from folks? It's good. Nice conversation here. All right. Well, I guess hey. till next time. Cheers. Nice to meet you. Till next time. Thanks, everybody. Cheers. Right. Au revoir. Yeah. <laughs>